Well, we're going to start putting our rubber straps down in there on the half sections. But uh, prior to that, you got to deal with your little uh, your, your straps that hold your tanks down. And these used to be riveted to the butt rib there. I just took them off for the ease of getting in there and being able to paint and stuff. Put those back on and you cut those at about six inches or so. And then you take uh, one of the extensions that come with the kit and we'll end up uh, attaching that to where we cut that. Take this end, which will now attach to your little straps that you uh, riveted on the flip side of uh, your solid rib there. A little piece of that rubber really helps to uh, spread that thin and then you let that set up and get tacky of course. Uh, getting this puppy in there can be a little bit tricky. I found that I had to remove that block in order to get this in. You can see that once it's in there, it actually slides forward of that spar. kind of sits down in there. And in order to do that, that needed to be out of the way to get it in there. And one of the reasons you want to be really careful when you're disassembling the your tank originally you don't want to mess these uh, these ends of these hold down straps up because you got to reuse those remember we splice these together so here's a here's a splice here's our extension we splice out here whereas the strap used to go through all, all the way down and then our new chafing strips so here we are at the down to the wire on this uh, install of the left hand tank and uh, just a little uh, um, word to the wise I guess before you there's a lot of fitting that's involved in making sure this lid is sitting in the right place before you drill any holes and really everything is centered around your your new cap and where that's located and uh, so you need to make sure that your tank is where your tank needs to be before you hole find anything or try to duplicate any of the holes off of the old tank lid. That's where we're at right now is ensuring that our tank is exactly where we want it to so be. So here's some of the important things to look for. Uh, of course, your fuel line. <laughs> and then underneath, you've also got a drain. And your vent, of course. The drawing says that you overlay your uh, your new tank lid with the old one. You can do that if you've hole found a few uh, prior to that. And if you hole find a few prior to that, make sure they're ones that don't move. Uh, for instance, that root rib, that'll move in and out. So you wouldn't use those. You'd use some corner ones. I actually opted to uh, hole find these instead of laying that old tank cover over this one. That just added one more variable in there. And at this point, I don't want any variation. I want those holes to be exactly where I want them. And the old tank had some holes that were wobbled out. And so I think that hole finding each one of these, Clico in it in place, once you get a couple of them established to hold it, make sure it cannot move. And then just simply hole find each one. You're going to have a, a much nicer job, much cleaner job, um, ensuring that these holes all line up with the nut plates. One of 
the sayings I've adapted well in aviation, well life in general, is everything takes longer. And uh, that seems to hold up more often than not. Uh, one, one down, one to go. Well, actually about half to go. We just got to install the parts. Pretty cool. Um, real detailed job, especially getting the screw holes back, back in there. Uh, that took a, took a number of hours to get that lid back on once everything else was complete. Anyway, uh, happy to move on. Uh, love the kit. Next one's got not going to take near as long.